Well, Unum Home was uh, kind of born out of 2020 and, and the lockdown phase. Um, during that time, you know, everybody was at home and we lost two of our biggest projects in, in a single week, um, which was tough. Um, it was tough, but you know, we, we found a way to use the team we had to sort of redirect. That was a tough time for everybody when, when we had two big commercial projects essentially drop within the same week and, and we we're sitting there going, well, where can we focus our attentions now, you know? And another conversation started to roll about, well, what if we were to, you know, take this, this model and this prototype that, that addresses sort of the Denver, standard Denver infill urban lot and approach it a little bit differently. iteration of this was done working with Unum because we do a ton of projects with them and there's a, just a, a general trust there uh, to be able to perform good projects and deliver you know a design that's unique. The genesis of the, the design, um, you know, we're, we're calling it a modern colonial. Jim and I are from the East Coast and very familiar with that sort of single gable form with a porch and simple fenestration, simple windows and we sort of started with that typology and began to sort of morph it for more modern responses. You know, colonial architecture in, in its traditional form focused on the exterior facade right. and, and tried to order that very deliberately. And I think more developer architecture at this point thinks only about the inside and, and wants to make sure that the windows are, are based on the program inside and, and essentially ignores what the outside looks like. And I think this is a balance between the two. The technique um, of charring the wood actually preserves and protects it. But we love the fact that it has a memory and it has life where you can see, you know, when it's first applied, it, you know, it's super dark and, and you know, almost looks fresh or painted. Um, and then it starts to weather and there's, there's something really, really interesting about a live, you know, an element like that that, that, that takes on age and takes on patina. What I thought was cool is we were able to create the, uh, the second floor sort of access there, you know, and it allows people to be in these uh, living spaces downstairs, but still feel connected upstairs and vice versa. And, you know, this house only being about 2,200 square feet and being four bedrooms, you know, it's not a McMansion by any stretch of the imagination. So I think it's important to have efficient living systems in here that people can still feel, you know, private in their own spaces, but then feel communal in some of the openings. And I think that the design that the Unum team did allowed us to, to kind of create that. And it still uh, feels much bigger than a 2,200 square foot house, which I think is cool. The balcony that's, you yeah. know, that faces the street <laughs> up there. Um, and that was a, a conscious effort to not necessarily be hip habitable space or to go out there and, and um, you know entertain it's really about your engagement with the city mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of this portal that is framed so that you have sort of this framed view into the into the neighborhood but being able to sort of walk out and engage but not fully be exposed oh I think the Unum home model and sort of this plug-and-play model can evolve um, is such that we'll get new opportunities to develop you know, different models and slight iterations of this model and then be able to plug and play them on the lots. And that works great from a development side, but it also works great from a client side. It all depends on what sort of inspiration sort of drives us, what we're reading, what we see, that, that might start to find its way into, into the architecture. Yeah, well I think time and place both contribute to what a house is and what a single family residence is. And I think, you know, we're excited to be we're excited to be able to continue that thought via this model and, you know, be able to do it internally and then deliver this to, uh, to whatever location we, we might be delivering it to.